What is going on everybody? How is everybody doing today? Welcome here today to my first 2021 NBA mock draft. So yeah, this is a little bit early as it's only been about two weeks of the NBA season so far. We're here on Real GM. I'm going to be doing a lottery mock draft with a lottery simulation. And it'll be pretty cool to see like the Nuggets in here. We're going to be seeing the Rockets, the Raptors. So this is going to be really fun to do. Now, I think TradeNBA.com, where I kind of react to trade videos like that website, has a way better mock draft simulator, but they don't have the updated 20 2021 class yet it's still on 2020 so for now i'm doing this on real gm we are going to run the lottery simulation and this is what it is going to be for today's video now if you guys want to see mock drafts on the channel drop a thumbs up i love doing these and i think it's going to be fun like it's still early in the college season it's very early in the nba season and we're just going to have fun with this today and who knows maybe in a couple months from now in june one of these picks could be right and that'd be pretty cool to see so detroit getting the number one pick Interesting after they just took a, you could say, point guard or a ball handler in the 2020 draft with Killing Hayes. But I think even with Killing Hayes, they can maybe play him off ball since he does have shooting potential and he does have a good shot or he did overseas. He's been a little bit struggling downtown to start this season, but he's a great passer and I think this would still be a no-brainer with Kate Cunningham. Now, Kate Cunningham has been good so far at Oklahoma State. You could also consider Jalen Green here to maybe have a backcourt of Jalen Green and Killing Hayes, would, which would be an interesting idea. But I just feel like unless you're a team with a bona fide point guard and shooting guard, like the Warriors, right? And you get the number one over pick. Maybe then you don't take Cade. But I think if you're a team like the Pistons, you got to go best player available. And that is Cade Cunningham, who's has the size. He's, I believe, 6'7". He can play point guard, shooting guard, small forward. Mainly guard those positions on the defensive end. He's a great ball handler. He's a good shooter. He's a great attacker at the rim he could be a very good rebounder in the nba because he's uh because of his size and he's physical he's a good passer he's got good court vision and i think he's the number one player he's my number one player in the 2021 class and adding him to the young core of say kudumboya killian hayes sadiq bay you can even say jeremy grant isaiah stewart if you want that would be pretty nice for them now this is shocking the raptors so at the moment i'm recording this on January 5th, you guys might see this a couple days later, uh, the Raptors are 1-5. and five. Their only win was on New Year's Eve against the Knicks, and that one was kind of close throughout the game as well until the fourth, late, later in the fourth quarter happened. So this is a team that I don't think we'll see in the lottery in May when the lottery happens, especially as I is two. Like, maybe they could end up missing the playoffs and being the 14th team here. But two, this would be very interesting. Now, Kyle Lowry, expiring free agent or expiring contract, he will be a free agent. Maybe he doesn't come back to Toronto and they mutually part ways. Really solidified positions are their point guard slash shooting guard in Fred Van Vliet, Pascal Siakam at the four, and you could say OG and Anobi, the money he just got paid at the three. So they could look at another guard or they could look at center here. And I'm going to have them go Jalen Green out of the G League. This guy is a straight scorer. I think he's going to be, I think he has the best scoring potential or he's just the best scorer in this class as a um, shooting guard. I think he does have the frame to be a three as well in the NBA and he might even have the ball handling skills to be a one if some teams want to play him like that i think he's going to be a great three-point shooter even a good mid-range shooter good at attacking the rim i think his defense definitely has a little bit to work on but him playing in the g league could be interesting like this is new to everybody like we've never really experienced this before players playing in the g league or just high-end prospects like this like jalen green and jonathan kuminga and isaiah todd and deshi nick so this is new for all of us and i think jalen green will probably go in the top three i don't know how many g league games we're going to be able to see this year and see him in action it might be more practices than games actually but i think the raptors could use jalen green have him at the number two you have uh, fred van vliet at your number one you'll have oj at the three pascal at the four then you can kind of figure out your center you might have some money in free agencies so you can spend it on a center but i think grabbing a wing is so important and i would value a wing more than a center because i was thinking of the center out of usc here but i'm gonna go jalen green going to the raptors now speaking of that center out of usc uh it's the number one big man in the shift oh where is he no please really oh no there he is he's listed as a power forward but yeah evan mobley he is a center that could shoot a little bit he has actually really good ball handling skills. He's kind of like James Wiseman. I would say he's a better prospect than James Wiseman. Not by much, but I think they're similar in talent to where they were kind of in the beginning of their college careers and what their skills are. None are really 
exceptional defensive players, kind of like Onyeka Kongbu was at USC. But Evan Mobley's offensive potential is there, and I think adding him in Houston, another team, I don't think in May will be here, up here in the lottery. I think they'll be a playoff team still. But adding Mobley with a front court of Christian Wood, that would be pretty nice for the future as Christian Wood's only 25. He's under contract for three years now. Who knows? By the lottery, James Harden might not be on their team or he might demand a trade after this season. Uh, and he's like, yeah, I'm never playing for you guys again. Like, trade me right now. So I don't know what assets they could have around them. Maybe they end up with a center or something like that. He could trade to Brooklyn. They have Jared Allen. But still, I think if you have an Evan Mobley, Christian Wood front court. That's pretty nice, and you still have John Wall, and then either James Harden or all the assets you get for James Harden, and you can move going forward with that. Now, Memphis, this is a team that can benefit from being bad this year. Now, they have a good young core in John Moran, obviously, who's a future all-star, and all-NBA player, Jaron Jackson Jr., Brandon Clark, Justice Winslow, Dylan Brooks. They have a good young core. I think their average age is like 24, 25, so they are a young team. John Morant is currently hurt, so they could definitely end up in the lottery or even the top five as they also were in 2019 and i think they might look for a wing player you can kind of have dylan brooks being between john morant and who i'm gonna have them take here jonathan kuminga out of the g league so like jalen green it's gonna be a weird way to scout jonathan kuminga if we don't have all that much film from the G League, but his size, his frame, his defensive potential, his ability to shoot the ball, a lot of people are kind of comparing him to Pascal Siakam. And just imagine putting him out there as your small forward with Jaron Jackson Jr. at the four or running some small ball lineups with Jaron Jackson Jr. at the five and Kuminga at the four. That would just be great. And I think Memphis... I mean, even if they make the playoffs, they're not going to go far like they were last year. They're probably going to lose to the Lakers if they ended up winning out in the playing tournament over Portland. Hey, it's not that bad to be bad this year. This is a great draft class and another bona fide potential star to your already great young core. I think that would be huge for them. Coming up next, we have the Washington Wizards, who at this moment are, I believe, 1-5 in five to start the year. They have been abysmal, and I'm kind of shocked. I thought in the Eastern Conference, there was no way Russell Westbrook wasn't making the playoffs, and I still think the Wizards will definitely be in the play-in tournament, but it isn't looking as likely as it was maybe when the Russell Westbrook trade happened, but I'm going to have them taking a player where they already have their backward figured out for next year. It's going to be Westbrook and Bradley Beal, but I think they're going to go best player available here with Jalen Suggs. They took a wing player in Denny of Dia in 2020. They have Rui Hashimura, Davis Bertans. I think they would love an Evan Mobley, but I, right now, Evan Mobley already went to the Houston Rockets. I think they're going to go Jalen Suggs, the best player on the board. And I, I don't know, like say the Rockets are up there and they have their backcourt or the Wizards or the Hornets. I think teams like shouldn't be afraid to take Jalen Suggs. This dude might be the number one player in the country right now. He's a great scorer inside and from the three. Now his three point shooting isn't at crazy volume, but in the NBA, I could see this dude taking like five, six, seven threes a night. He's six, four, a little bit skinnier, like you would want to see him put a little bit more muscle on, but he has the size. And if once he's hitting NBA gyms and he's getting NBA training, I think he's going to be a beast on both ends of the floor. Honestly, I would be very shocked if he falls out of the top five, maybe even the top three. Like this player is probably, I think he's going to maybe win the Naismith Award. Bro, actually, no. Uh, no, no, that might not happen. It might end up being like Luke Garza or somebody like that. But Jalen Suggs is phenomenal. I would so take this guy in the top five 100% and not even hesitate at all. With the sixth pick, I'm going to have the Charlotte Hornets take Jalen Johnson out of Duke. They already kind of have their backcourt somewhat with Lamella Ball and one of the two of Rozier and Graham. They have P.J. Washington. Yeah, Miles Bridges is all right, but they can always use another wing player. And with the centers on the board, I don't think they take Usman Garuba here. He's 6'9", 220. He's an exceptional rebounder for somebody who won't be a center. So you're going to be getting a really good physical presence from your three or your four out of Jalen Johnson. He's not much of a three-point shooter, but he has hit his threes here and there this year at Duke. So I'm sure with NBA training and player development, he can knock down some threes. He is kind of a crafty scorer for somebody with his size. I like him inside as well. And I think he's a solid ball handler. And I think Miles Bridges might not be the answer in Charlotte. So why not take somebody that could just end up replacing him down the line if you feel like he might want too much money or you realize all right maybe he's not our franchise small forward maybe a bench player but not our starting guy so you can go Jalen Johnson there the Thunder are here at seven I wouldn't expect them to be this low I think they're going to end up with the worst record in the NBA 
by the end of May or April, whatever you want to say. So I think they won't be lower than five if they end up as the worst team. They can't drop lower than five. And I'm going to have them taking Deshi Nix, who is a point guard who's playing in the G League. I do not know why it says he's a small forward. This is why I don't really like Real GM's site. So I'm hoping Trade NBA's site is up and running soon. Like, I'll literally just show you. Like, look how nice this looks, like, for the 2020 draft. So it is obviously outdated. But, like, you can have it like this. You can even have an um, analysis for each pick. You can see the current roster, their salary cap, their upcoming picks. You can literally just draft the player and then like you can see the board down here it has the logo behind them like it, it's a lot better but unfortunately it's not updated yet but yeah the main thing for Deshi Nix is he's a great passer and he's a great ball handler and I think OKC can use their point guard if they miss out on Jalen Suggs or if they miss out on Kate Cunningham why not take somebody that could play next to Shane Gilgis Alexander for the future of your team so I'm gonna have him going to OKC at pick seven on to eight Denver Nuggets a team that probably will not be here come May like the Rockets and like the Raptors and I'm gonna have them go Greg Brown out of Texas pretty much somebody that could be a four in the NBA he's someone that's shooting threes at Texas I believe he's shooting around four threes a night making about one of them and one and a half of them he's shooting like 27 percent but at least he's taking the three so at least he has the confidence and he will actually try to space the floor on an NBA roster you could put him between Michael Porter Jr. and Nikola Jokic for your future another player they could think here is BJ Boston but he's been struggling at Kentucky so he's kind of losing his top 10 hype but the season is still early you could also look at Josh Christopher or or James Book Knight, but I'm going to have them go Greg Brown, who I think would be a pretty solid fit next to Nikola Jokic and Michael Porter Jr. But like I said, I don't think the Nuggets will be a lottery team. I expect them to make the playoffs and turn it around. So I pick nine. I'm going to have the Spurs take a foreign player, the first one in this draft, Usman Garuba out of Real Madrid. He's a high energy guy. A lot of people kind of compare his game to like Kenneth Fareed's. I think San Antonio could use something in their front court with Aldridge probably not coming back next year or just not playing a major role in their future, obviously because of his age. Jakob Pertl might not be your franchise center. Actually, I don't think he is your franchise center. So Usman, if he's going to be your four, your five, you want to have a high motor guy, he can run with the young guys like Derek White, who's not the youngest guy, but you know what I mean. You have DeJounte Murray, Wani Walker, Devin Vassell, Keldon Johnson. I think he'd be a nice fit to their young core. Next up, we have the Timberwolves who are at pick 10. Now, if this was the case, the Warriors would have this pick because it is top three protected. Another reason why I'm not too fond of this website. So I'm really going to talk as this is the Warriors pick. I'm going to have them go with Scotty Barnes out of Florida State. So Barnes is interesting because he is not really a good shooter. He is taking some threes like Greg Brown. At least he has, he has confidence to take it, but he is not hitting his three so far this year. He is an abysmal free throw shooter, which really doesn't translate to outside shooting. So that does scare me. But I feel like the Warriors could use a physical presence for somebody that can kind of play the four. He could be a small forward as well. We don't know if Kelly Oubre is going to be back next year. But he's somebody that can just be a high motor guy for them. Play some defense and they could use it. If they have kind of Curry and Clay out there, hopefully Clay doesn't get injured again. They have some shooting with Wiseman as well. They could use somebody like Scotty Barnes who can give them good defensive minutes because they could use some defensive help even in their second unit. But boy, he needs to work on his free throws. So with the 11th pick, I'm going to the Sacramento Kings take another guard yeah BG Boston or Brandon Boston however you want to call him out of Kentucky who has not been very good this year he's shooting like 36% from the field like 15% from three if you watch his college tape or any of his highlights, he has incredible upside because of his athleticism. I thought he'd be way better of a shooter than this. Now, he could be a small forward because he is 6'7", but he only weighs like 180, so he definitely needs to put on some weight. Like, this guy is almost a foot taller than me. I'm 5'8", and I weigh like 150. How does this guy only weigh 30 more pounds than me? So, but once he's in the NBA training facilities, he can put some muscle on. Yes, I think... I don't know. These next couple of games, especially when they're starting to play like a lot of conference games or just a lot more and when the tournament happens, if Kentucky's even in the tournament, he's going to have to up his draft stock because coming into the season, he was one of the top guys that you thought would be drafted, but he has not played good whatsoever this year. But I think the Kings could take a flyer on him. So at pick 12, I'm going to have the Chicago Bulls taking one of the best players in college basketball right now, James Buknate out of UConn. He is a sophomore. He's been a pretty good shooter this year. He's taking over six threes a night. He's knocking about... 33, 34% of those. He's averaging 23 points. He's a good mid-range scorer. I think he's a pretty good three-point scorer. Even though he's only shooting 33%, but I think it's pretty good for his system in UConn, and he's taking a lot of shots. He's a good free-throw shooter, which makes me think he's going to be a good three-point shooter when he's in the pros, and I think the Bulls could use somebody like that off their bench. I'm not saying that he needs to start for them, but who knows? Maybe they'll trade Zach Levine this offseason because he will be an expiring contract next year, and maybe they want they don't want to pay him like 25, 30 mil a year that he might X for. So 
So maybe Buknet could replace him down the line. Yeah, Miami, another team that probably won't be here in the lottery, but they end up at pick 13. With the 13th pick, I'm going to have the Miami Heat taking Zaire Williams out of Stanford. Somebody that's kind of similar to Preston Ochoa, not as good of a defender, but somebody kind of with a higher upside at that stretch four position that they could use to plug next to Bam Adebayo if they feel like maybe Preston Ochoa isn't the answer. Like I said, I don't think the Heat will be here, but I think they could take a flyer on this guy who could maybe be their small forward, their power forward, somebody that could be in the second unit if Ochoa is going to be kind of the starting four going forward, because right now they're kind of running like uh, Bam Adebayo at the four to start off the game and Myers Leonard at the five, and obviously it's different in the fourth quarter. And finally, the Brooklyn Nets, yeah, another good team here in the lottery, are going to take Moses Moody, the freshman out of Arkansas with the final pick of the lottery, kind of keeping the trend going of wings taken with the most recent 14th overall pick. See, that is pretty cool. I am I am a fan of this uh, feature on Real GM, but Moses Moody has been a phenomenal three-point scorer this year, just an overall scorer in general. He's good at the line. I think he has really good defensive potential because I think he's a pretty good defender now and he's still young. He's only played a handful of college games, 10 to be exact. He's 6'6", six, six, he's over 200 pounds. I think this would be a high upside pick for anybody picking in the lottery. So yeah, that is going to be my lottery mock draft. I hope you guys enjoyed my first 2021 mock draft. Let me know what you guys think down below where maybe any of these picks you disagree with, or did you agree with any of these? And also drop a thumbs up on the video if you want to see more of these going forward. Like we can do one of these like a month or one of these every two weeks with a new lottery because the standings will fluctuate and we'll have new teams. And obviously with the lottery simulator, we'll have different teams at the top and kind of in the middle. But yeah, drop a thumbs up if you guys do enjoy and want more of these. Thank you all for watching. I love you guys and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.